Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Let's Play Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. Um, last time, uh, we found a dead artist, and we are currently dressed as said dead artist. Um, and uh, John has requested that we not tell uh, the landlady that he's dead. Um, which I can kind of understand as an idea. Um, and Sherlock Holmes in the books was very happy at times to be not necessarily deceptive, but to not give all the information he had. For example, in Sign of Four, he doesn't give away the that he has an idea of what the boat looks like. Um, so I think we'll probably go along with John, because we didn't do one of his things last time about the elephants, and he was slightly sad about that. What's wrong, dear? You look like you've seen the oh, I thought we were going to go up to you and talk to you. Uh, oh, who entered my flat recently? We won't ask about me. We won't, yeah, we, we, we won't tell her. We'll go along with what John said. Can you tell me if anyone else has recently entered the flat? Oh, you're talking about that limping man. I'm sorry I let him in. I was scared. And I thought maybe, maybe he would motivate you to find money so that you would pay your rent. No offense, dear. Can you describe him? Oh, so you weren't at home. I was so certain you didn't leave your flat that day. He was of average height, had a limp and a tattoo on his neck, and he was smoking Malpal cigarettes. My husband used to smoke those. They have a horrible smell I can recognize from a mile away. Yeah, call the police. Can I ask a favour? Of course, dear. Please call the police and ask them to enter the flat. And don't look inside until they come up. What? What trouble have you stepped in this time? It really doesn't matter. Thank you, Mum. There we go. Oh, new Mind Palace clue. Ah, oh, I'm a perfect gentleman. Thank you. And that's a tuxedo. I have a tuxedo. Right, we'll have a look at the Mind Palace. Which we might have a cutscene now with John potentially praising us for that. Or maybe not. <laughs> uh, and then we'll, we'll have a look at the... Um, have a look at the Mind Palace. Oh, Sherry, that was close. But you did everything correctly. Now... Take off your outfit. I can't let you walk around in a dead man's clothes. These aren't a dead man's clothes. These are my clothes. These are my clothes! I bought them with my own money. Boo. Alright. Uh, coal footprints. Oi. What? Okay, that one. Alright. Gallery thief was in Mercurio's flat. Yes, Mercurio's murderer and the gallery thief are the same person. Indeed. Hello. Thief, the thief was at Mercurio's flat to steal the photograph, but found Mercurio instead and killed him in self-defense. Seems most likely. And they're not going to be connected. I didn't think so. John has redrawn the photograph of violation that I found at Mercurio's place. In this painting, he depicts a pregnant woman with tribal scars on her face. So we need to look for someone that like that. Uh, well, I would assume so. A bit of mooching about. We might bump into someone with this kind of clothing. You just popped into existence. Very good. Uh, should I just wander around aimlessly? Is this familiar to you? I don't want to talk to you, mister. Don't want to talk to me. Okay. Should I be slightly more clothed in a particular way? Please don't like me. Watch that. Watch that one again. That's workers, isn't it? Yeah. So why did you change me out of it? Unless I see here. Oh, I changed back. Oh, I wore the fez.
Uh, where would that beard? Tan. And then I'm better with the workers. This is a terrible combination. I'm wondering if, yeah, we should be looking for someone who looks like this, or just talking to random people. Is this familiar to you? I like you, friend, but I can't help you. Okay. Maybe you? I do. Excuse me, just one question. I cannot, sorry. No. Everyone's looking at us, Sherry. You sure you know what you're doing? I really don't like the fact that it kind of goes, Oh, you, you, you're looking for, at these people, but you're talking to people, but because you're not talking to the right people, I'm going to complain. And it's like, well, in some cases, it's because I don't know who I'm meant to be looking for. And in some cases, it's because I can't find the people I'm looking for that I want to pick. So I'm, I'm picking, I'm talking to other people on the way. No, she doesn't have her face covered. You, maybe? Help me, please. Of course. The streets have the information you seek. The scars on the girl's face seem to be from Yu's ethnic group tribe. The only place where you can find Yu's people in Cordona is the refugee camp located under Victoria Bridge between Scaladio and Silverton. Oh, Oop, sorry. You were just standing there in the middle. Uh, right, Scaladia and Silverton. So is that this one? Okay, so we'll go here and just head up north. Uh, game saves on landing, but don't forget to make saves your own. It's like I did, and then I end up in a different place. Oh, I wonder if it's just saving the auto save rather than the Normal save. Right, we want to go north. Once the game's caught up with itself and is working. Right, so we want to... We want to get to the bridge. And I think they said it was under the bridge. May I ask you something? I have no idea. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm legitimately not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure where I am. All things being considered. This isn't where I should be, is it? No. Wait, what? There was a bridge? When did I cross the bridge? You say under. Huh. Does this poster truly claim that Cordona has a ghost? The what? Unholy howls keeping you inside at night? Luigi can help. All ghosts gone. Meet on southern pier of the Silverton Port. Donations gratefully accepted. Ooh. This town loves the supernatural. But all I see is another scam to disprove. The world shrivels under a skeptic's eye. That's why you're so sullen, Sherry. You leave no room for delight in the magical. I delight in making the unknown known. Let us begin by asking someone about the poster and then pay this Luigi a visit at the port. No, I want to... Mm, okay. Uh, no, no, no. I want to keep going with this. If we're still around here, maybe we'll pop in afterwards. But I want to find... I want to... I want to work through the main stories. Like, some of these sound interesting, but I'm worried I'm going to end up in a shootout. Which I really don't like. Ah! So I need to work my way down, then. Ah, here we go. This is how we get under the bridge, then. Beasts! 
Oh dear. Right, I'm gonna have... Well, we'll go and have a chat with him. Murderers! They're completely livid. First they come to our land, then they murder our people. Drop Sir, this place is off limits to the public. Please state your business or leave, or I shall request that the police escort you out. Private investigator. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm a private investigator. I'm looking for a witness for a case. A private investigator? Really? Even so, you're not authorised. I can't let you in. And you are? I'm Ronald Harlow, here to handle the refugee situation on behalf of City Hall. I'm the acting supervisor here, so I have full authority here to ask you to leave, or I shall order the police to detain you for trying to pass the blockade. Please, step back. Oh, we're observing him now, eh? Tries to appear older. Wants to look authoritative. Sweating, he's stressed. But he's sedentary. So this isn't where he'd normally be. Works indoors with poor lighting. Dazed formalist. I have no idea what that means. Uh, Ronald Harlow is a young clerk who tries his best to oversee a refugee camp assigned to him by Steve Hall. He's not very happy with such responsibility. He always does things by the book, executes all tasks he's given. However, he likes the experience to deal with problems outside his writing desk. He attempts, he's attempting to look older than the years by growing a scant moustache. Pale skin and bangs under his eyes suggest he works at a poorly lit office, which he rarely leaves. He craves to look authoritative. Okay, Sweaty Pons is extremely stressed by being outside his comfort zone. Depressed young clerk, exhausted by his day-to-day -day job. Um, he doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Judging by his clean and barely worn shoes, he does not favour the outdoors in any case. Uh, like this is the thing is it's basically going. Oh, here are the here are two bits of here are, here is the set of ev the evidence we've we've got. So, hmm, and it's like here's a set of events, and here's two different things that kind of use the weight them in different. Oh, how does this do the? So, but why does he want to look older? And this doesn't really talk about the th feather. Um, I think it's the dazed formalist. That's the one I'm going to go with. What about the murder that this crowd keeps shouting about? That's mere assumption. I assure you that the situation is under the police's control. I know you want to deal with this in the right way. You are obviously a professional and a responsible person, but you clearly have never handled a situation like this before. I am handling it, Mr. Holmes. Don't question my capability here. And tell me how you do it. You can't even calm this gathered crowd and ask for the police. They're not quite managing it either, are they? You consider yourself a problem solver, but until today, you've been solving problems sitting at your desk in a dark corner of a city hall room. Here, you need a more practical approach. What are you driving at, Mr. Holmes? I can help you. I can help you to handle the situation if you're truly interested in solving things quickly and quietly. And how exactly would you manage that? Simply tell the police that I'm with City Hall and I'm permitted to investigate the scene. I'll work out the rest. But in return, I need your help finding my witness. She's a young refugee. She's with child or was with child recently. Look, there is indeed a dead body inside the camp. So even if the girl you are looking for is there, all the refugees are now being detained and interrogated by the police. They won't allow you to speak with her. And I can't do anything about that until the situation settles down. So it's in our mutual interest to settle it. Oh, I suppose that things are bad enough that I ought not shy away from help. All right, Mr. Holmes. I'll tell the police to allow you to come inside. Just tell me when you're ready. Um. Yeah, we, let's ask the questions. How did the refugees get here? Mr. Harlow, how did the refugees end up here exactly? 
Oh, so you're not from around here yourself? I've been away for some time, but I read the papers. Yes, this whole story has been in the papers for almost a year now. They were smuggled to Cordona on a ship from Africa. Smuggled? Then why didn't you deport them? The smugglers managed to sneak them to shore and hide them inside an abandoned warehouse. When the police raided the warehouse and found the refugees there, the ship was already gone. We aren't even certain as to which ship it was. We have busy shipping routes with other colonies these days, you see. So you decided to lock them up under a bridge? There was no other option. Put them on We're a different ship. To work out what to do with them. Send them only hope wherever. We'll find a solution and not put them on a raft and float them out I mean, that's sea. true. But if you, you, you're arguing, then your argument for deportation is we didn't want to, not we couldn't. Because you could. All right, you'll work with the camp. Mr. Harlow, what exactly do you do here? What are your responsibilities? What I do and what I am responsible for are two different realities, Mr. Holmes. On paper, I am in charge of the camp territory, security, provision, and the refugees in general. What I actually do most of the time is knock on every city hall door trying to obtain some funding, or at least rations for the camp. The police here on city hall's behalf too? They are, minus those who came here after the body was found. The governor won't let the refugees disperse into the island, so there's a significant police presence guarding the camp. Naturally, they answer directly to the police. I have some influence here, but I'm not their direct authority. Okay, let's go in. I'm ready to take a look at the scene. All right. Go inside the camp and find Inspector Tewksbury. He's the officer investigating the scene. Tell him I sent you. Say you're an independent expert from City Hall. He'll fill in the details for you. I'll find my way with words. Thank you, Mr. Harlow. I was looking for other things, but the picture isn't the right place. I assume that's too So they keep these refugees under a bridge like proverbial trolls. No wonder the people outside are so disturbed. I assume you're Chukspre. Who the hell are you? How did you get in here? Mr. Ronald Harlow let me in, sir. I'm Sherlock Holmes, a surveyor of refugee affairs with City Hall. You're Inspector Tewksbury, I presume? A surveyor? What does that even mean? In short, I've been sent to conduct an extensive report on the incident for the Colonial Office, and to assess all the damage inflicted on state property. Got it. Another paper worm sent to count money and get food for archive mold. Go on, look around, but don't make yourself too at home. As if I didn't have enough problems before you appeared. Could you first tell me what happened here? What happened? People from the bridge above the camp heard a woman screaming and saw a mass of refugees attacking a man. Clearly not a refugee. When the camp guards came by, the man was floating in the sewage canal with a knife in his chest. Bam. A murder. Big news for Cordona. I'm sure. Thank you, Inspector. Uh, any of the victims? And none of the refugees were harmed? One fellow was cut. He's lying over there near their kitchen. He's in a bad way. 